Hey, there's a lot of info in this video, so be sure to use the chapters I've made for you to skip to the parts that interest you the most, or just watch the whole thing like I'd do if I was you. The choice is yours. Choose wisely. This is a review of the world famous Hairball Audio Lola, or Hairball Lola, the 500 series preamp that found itself homes in professional studios all over the world. It's like 10,000% nerdy stuff, and it's coming right up. So, good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Snake Pliskin. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified of new content right when it drops onto you. Cheers. I told you building audio gear was addictive, but what I didn't tell you was just how addictive it is. A brief history of my audio electronics building experience. <clears throat> a few months ago, with zero electronics experience, I modified a single part in a mic. It worked, and I didn't blow up. Then, last month, I built an entire rack mount mic preamp along with several swappable modules. That was the amazing DIYRE Color Duo, and it plugs into a wall outlet that puts out actual power. That also worked, and I didn't blow up. That sealed the deal for me. I became instantly hooked on building audio electronics. And now, only a few months after clumsily swapping a tiny capacitor into a mic, I've built one of the coolest and most unique sounding 500 series preamps ever designed, the Hairball Lola. You might have heard of Hairball Audio. They're very well known in the pro audio recording world. But in case you haven't, a brief history of Hairball Audio. Mike Maybe began Hairball Audio with just selling surplus knobs and switches he had laying around since there were high minimum orders on the parts he needed for his own projects. That was back in 2008, which was Eagle Eye and the curious case of Benjamin Button ago. He named it Hairball Audio because Mike had three cats and a dog at the time and just needed a quick name for his little shop he set up to offload those parts. The name stuck, and he loves it to this day. Although Hairball Audio is based in Seattle, Mike is actually from Kingston, Ontario, Canada, the old stomping grounds of the tragically hip Brian Adams and all kinds of other celebrities. He left Canada in 2001 to move to Seattle for the best reason anyone could have to do that, for a girl. And he's been there ever since. On top of offering kits for people to build their own 1176 style compressors, his Elements preamps, and more, he developed the Lola, named after the most beautiful little dog Mike has ever known. Uh, Lola sadly passed away in 2021, but her name lives on in recording studios around the world, this one included. Once again, I'm telling you this because I want you to know who you're buying from. It's so important for audio people and musicians on the whole to support small businesses that actually care about audio and not a profit margin. Small businesses with no staff have no shareholders to please. They do what they know and love, and hope that you will too. Hairball Lola employs 1.5 employees, including himself. Okay, back to the Lola. The Lola is unique in that it is a fully differential mic pre that utilizes discrete op amps and is transformer coupled. There aren't many in the world like that. So here's how it all works. You order a Lola kit from Hairball Audio, You'll also need to choose your op amps. I'll explain that soon. Then you're sent the kit in a nice, neat box and you're ready to get building. Or you can choose to purchase one already built. The choice is yours. If you want the eternal glory of building your own Lola, you'll need your usual soldering stuff. In order to turn it on, though, you'll need a 500 series chassis like this radial workhorse six pack I bought just for this review and also a few other 500 series modules that are on their way here as we speak. The chassis will give the Lola power and ins and outs. When I built the Lola, it took me about 10 hours altogether. I went really slow as to ensure I didn't make any mistakes. So without further delay, 
Here is 10 hours of me building the Lola. But don't worry, I'm not going to show you all the 10 real-time hours of it. That would be ridiculous. I'm actually going to show you 11 real-time hours of it since I accidentally left the camera running. Here's the build, but set on ludicrous speed. So here we are right here with the empty board. This is the PCB that I'm going to populate. So there we have it. So let's get started. Yeah, so here we go. All the resistors have been populated. So uh, that's that. And moving on. Well, I think it's come together pretty good. Got a bunch of it together. Just installed these little buttons. All right, moving on. Okay, so I've put in two transformers. I don't know how good of a job the wiring is, but uh, yeah. Two transformers, the input and the output transformer. And everything else is in there. Got a lot of mess to clean up from all the wires, but there we go. All right, next. So now I'm doing the meter. Uh, so this is really, really small work. Anyway, I've got to, I just done the diodes and I did one IC. And uh, well, I'll populate the rest to see what happens. This is the part that I think I was afraid of the most. We'll see how it goes. But I did test the actual preamp without the meter and it worked great. So, so far so good. All right, moving on. Wow, that ramped up so fast it went to plaid. But there was still more to build. I had to build the discrete op amps. I didn't film me building those because it was very small and time consuming and rather boring. Not that the footage I just showed you wasn't boring, it was. So what are discrete op amps? Like, you know, in case you wanna know. Operational amplifiers are little devices inside some preamps and other audio electronics that can add gain or attenuate signal and or a bunch of other highly technical stuff way above this channel's pay grade. The basic gist as it applies to this video is that different op amps can change the sound of a preamp. In the case of the Lola, it requires two discrete op amps to function, specifically the 2520 footprinted op amps, which were first developed by API in the early 70s. They're just these little one inch square PCB circuit boards with a lot of parts on them. That's what they are. They've got these little legs that you can press into receiving seats and you, know, you can swap them for other ones. I built two of this style discrete op amps when I built the CTX color modules for the DIYRE color duo. Anyway, the Lola utilizes two parallel op amps in its unique design, and the result is a behavior that mimics a much larger preamp as opposed to a small 500 series preamp by improving the transformer's performance. For super mega nerds, two op amps in parallel creates a similar effect of running a single op amp on 24 volt rails. I have no idea what that means, but I delivered it like I did, and that's what counts. Hairball offers two flavors of discrete op amps to choose from. The pre-built BA-512 op amps as made by Ison Audio, which are meticulous recreations of the Neve op amps found in the old BBC consoles. It's a little less hi-fi sounding, but adds a wonderful character and works well with the 1073 style transformers. It's got some of that Neve sound, you know what I mean? And the famous 990 op amps, which are based on the JS990 design by Dean Jensen as first published as an AES paper in 1980. These are ultra clean and detailed hi-fi amps that are used in the John Hardy preamps. Now, here's my little story about these op amps. When I was talking to Mike over at Hairball Audio, I told him that I had only a little experience building audio electronics. The 990s 
are, you know, notoriously tricky op amps to build because there are a lot of components, some quite large, on a one inch square board. It requires a steady hand and excellent soldering technique. Plus, you have to join some of the components in strange ways and then wind for inductors by hand. Many people have difficulty building these, especially neophytes like me. So Mike said he would send the 990 kits, but also include a couple of pre-built BA-512s, the Neve style, in case I fail at building the 990. So uh, me being me, with my unhealthy amount of I-can-do-anything cognitive dissonance, I built two of them at the same time. But I can see how these uh, are difficult for a lot of people. It took me a long time to build these, hence I didn't film it. But I did it, and they work flawlessly. It was then complete. I did the work over three evenings. And here it is. Behold, the Lola. Look at that. What a thing of beauty. When it's all put together, it looks ultra complex. It's, it's not that complex when you're building it, but once it's all together, you look at it and you go, jeez, that's a bit daunting. It's got a Gray Hill stepped rotary gain switch that provides 65 decibels of clean gain, a Born T-pad output knob, three illuminated push button switches for phantom power, phase, and a line level selector, a quarter inch unbalanced DI jack that sends a signal through a couple of FET buffers before launching it into the input transformer, and a selectable 10 segment LED metering that switches between plus four VU and peak. Inside this Amazeballs preamp are two transformers, an input transformer and an output transformer, both meticulous recreations of the original 10468 and 1166 transformers as found in the Neve 1073 console channel strip, custom designed by Ed Anderson. Of note, most modern recreations of these transformers from contemporary manufacturers focus on improving specifications as opposed to faithful recreations, which ends up washing out the original character and tone that made these transformers famous in the first place. One day I think I'll do a video about transformers because I went looking for someone to tell me how they actually work, and uh, no one knows. Not even transformer manufacturers. It's not esoteric, it's, it's literally magic. But the same can be said for electricity and aspirin, so just we don't know how it works, we just know that it does. Either way, millions of people pay hundreds of dollars for plugins that aim to digitally recreate the sound of transformers. But these are the real deal. These are real. Man, all that tech talk was so incredibly nerdy that it wandered far too close to super mega nerd territory. What you really want to know is, how does the Lola sound? Well, shocker, I've been talking to you through the Lola this entire time, as I do in all my videos. When I first built the Lola, I tested almost 20 mics with it. Some sounded great and others sounded fantastic. But one mic paired with the Lola blew my mind's brain. The Lauten Audio Atlantis. This is why I chose to use this mic today. It complements the sound so wonderfully, I think. It's a match made in audio heaven. So let's hear some samples and maybe compare some op amps. For this round of tests, I use the super neutral, super quiet, super transparent transformerless mic known as the Roswell Pro Audio Mini K87. In the interest of saving time, instead of increasing the Lola step gain in its 4.5 decibel increments, I increase the gain 25% each time. So uh, just know that there are plenty of gain settings in between what you're about to hear. Each boost of the gain knob, I'm lowering the output knob to compensate and not blow the converters, obviously. This part is best listened to on either headphones or very good studio monitors. Okay, roll the tape.
You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with 990 op amps at 0% on the gain. And this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with 990 op amps at 25%. And this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with 990 op amps at 50%. And this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with 990 op amps at 75%. And this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with 990 op amps at 100%, and this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with BA512 op amps at 0% on the gain, and this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with BA512 op amps at 25%, and this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with BA512 op amps at 50%, and this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with BA512 op amps at 75%, and this is how it sounds. You're listening to the Roswell Mini K87 through the Hairball Lola with BA512 op amps at 100%, and this is how it sounds. The Hairball Lola with 990 op amps, Hairball Lola with BA512 op amps. You can really hear the difference with the op amp swap, eh? I think I might prefer the BA512s, which is what I put in uh, for this, me talking right now. I've got a... I got both of those BA-512 op amps in there. Uh, this is what it sounds like. It sounds great. Oh, and it wouldn't be the Time Preservation Society if I didn't write and record a song when I test out fantastic gear. Got to do that. It's in no way time consuming to do that. Everything in this mini song was recorded with either the Loudon Audio Atlantis, the vocals, electric guitars, Atlantis, or the Roswell Mini K87 for the acoustic guitars. Uh, so here's that mini song. <laughs> the darkness into the light from digital coldness to warm and bright you change the way I sound and feel from artificial to 3D and real I know you'll take some time to shine and although you make me work to be mine you'll bring It measures, oh, hold on a second, let me just find my trusty old measuring tape here. You know, this measuring tape was created as part of a reality program as designed by the AI makers of the Matrix. I have uh, no actual idea where I picked it up. You know, I know this measuring tape doesn't exist. I know that when I hold it in my hand, the Matrix is telling my brain that it's solid and real. After three years, you know what I realize? Ignorance is bliss. Anyway, it measures 5.25 inches tall and 1.5 inches wide. You can purchase the Hairball Audio Lola kit for only $325 by going to www.hairballaudio.com or by following the link in the description below. When you choose the kit, it will take you to another page where you choose the op amps. You can then either choose a pair of pre-built JS990s, the clean ones, for $100, or a pair of pre-built BA512s for $100. 
or, or a pair of 990s that you have to build yourself, like I did, for $50, or you can choose none and supply your own op amps. You can also choose to receive the Lola fully built and ready to go for $725 altogether. And that comes with either a pair of 990s at no extra charge or the option to instead include a pair of the BA-512s for $20 extra. But I'm telling you, building the Lola is very easy if you just take your time and enjoy the process. You know, I don't enjoy processes much in life, or at least I didn't before. I want the end result as fast as I can. I don't know if you're the same or not. But just slowing down, putting on a good audiobook, or, or even listening to your favorite album 75 times in a row, and just doing the steps is so cathartic, you know? And when it's all done, it's instant pride. You're like beaming. I made this. You know, like Tom Hanks when he built Fire and Castaway. You can hear what you've built right away. Tell all your friends that you built a preamp. You, you have bragging rights. As for the instructions, they were clear enough that I didn't once have to reach out for support. Very straightforward. They're not as award-winningly simple and basic as the DIYRE instructions, but they do win the award for the funniest. I'm telling you, the instructions are chock full of passive jokes kind of woven into them. I was laughing out loud as I read some of them. Like They, they, they were funny. Could a person with no experience building any electronics whatsoever build this? Yes, I think so. They link all sorts of helpful videos on how to solder and other things in case you need it. But man, it's really straightforward. One part at a time, like building a model train or an airplane or something. The 990 op amp is a little more complicated, I'll say, because of the tiny size and the insanely small amount of solder required for each solder point, like less than you think you need. If you're a complete beginner, maybe go with the pre-built 990s or just get the BA-512s, which I would opt for anyway. I like the 512s better. I, th I like that, that Navy sound, at least on my voice I do. As for how good the Hairball Lola is, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, you can hear. Okay, so this mic, the, the, this Atlantis here, has a transformer in it, and it has a bit of its own saturation. But I'm sending this directly into the Hairball Lola over there, and I'm using uh, the BA-512s, and that gives it that Nevi sound, you know, that uh, a little bit darker, a little, little darker sound kind of thing. And then through the transformers, and uh, I got it at uh, well about twelve o'clock on the dial on the gain dial. So I'm adding a bit more transformer sound than I normally would, but I, I just really had to do that for this video. Anyway, it's unbelievable. It's the best, most unique sounding preamp I have ever played with, hands down. That's straight honest. There's a reason that this is world famous. It fills the gap between ultra clean and colored preamps. It's like it's like this in-betweener that you can make really colored or really, really clean. If you already have a 500 series chassis and you're looking for an ultra high-end mic pre for a really affordable price, this is the one to get, like buy it. For less than 400 bucks, you can have a piece of gear that normally costs like three times that or more. Hairball Audio is a wonderful small US company whose 1.5 employees, including him, prepare these kits by hand. Mike is a really, really great guy who really knows his stuff. So you're buying from a good, hardworking dude who actually cares about sound. And I love that. No boardroom crap. It's just a guy who really, really likes doing this. He doesn't do this to get rich. He does this simply because he simply enjoys this stuff. He likes doing this stuff. This is the real deal. And if you decide to build it yourself, then you know exactly what went into it, and it means that much more to you. The Lola is so incredibly unique sounding that if you had a, a Grace or a Millennia preamp and uh, an API and a Neve and an SSL, the Lola still has a place between all of them. It's that unique. And with the op amp swaps, that's really cool. There's all kinds of op amps you can buy too. There's, they have them all over the place. Either kits are already pre-built sent to you you know, 100 bucks, 50 bucks, 70 bucks, 45, 35 dollars. There's all kinds of different prices. I think 
that once you have the Lolo, you will find that you'll reach for it before any other preamp that you have more times than you might think. It's one of those. Anyway, I have one more piece of information that is absolutely critical for you to know. It's very important. My cat's name is Lola. I call her baby Woe. Even though she's 15 years old, she's Mr. Rampage's sister and uh, they came together. The other day I said to her, you're just a little hairball, Lola. Oh, well, that'll just about do it for all of me here at the Time Preservation Society in another massive video, I'm sure. Call me Snake. Bye now. In transmission. Yes. It's a small screen. Watch these other videos, please, and buy the Lola. That's a great preamp. Listen to this sound. It sounds so good. All right. Thanks so much.